All right, so this video is going to be rated R. If you have kids around and your volume's up, you definitely, definitely want to make sure the volume's down or you go in the other room and watch this video because I'm really pissed off about something. And what I'm really pissed off about is the way people cold email. I get cold emailed a lot. I don't mind getting cold emailed. Um, but I'm going to get really passionate and I'm going to turn out probably my inner Dan Pena in this video. I'm going to do a teardown of a cold email that I got. And I get a lot of cold emails. I'm going to go through one example, but they're all basically the same. And what it is, is a complete pitch. All right. There's a difference between good cold email and spamming people, right? A cold email is meant to build relationships and spamming people is just blasting as many as you can and just pitch, 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 and just talking about you, 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 you. So I started thinking about this the other day. I started thinking about how cold email is kind of like back in, you know, when you used to date, right? Before maybe you were married and, and stuff like that. So imagine walking up to a girl or a guy in public and just starting talking about yourself instantly and bragging about everything you're doing, right? So I was, I was thinking about this, like back in college, for instance, like if I walked, if I had a good game in, in, in football, played football in college, and I just walked up to a girl and said, hey, did you see my game last Saturday? I scored two touchdowns and had 150 yards receiving. I was all conference. You know, everyone loves me. Like, that's how people basically start their cold emails. And then on top of it, I'd be like, hey, by the way, do you want to get married next week? You know, people just going in asking for a meeting or something like that, instead of just working to get a reply. There's a lot of different examples. Just imagine like walking up to somebody and just bragging about how big your biceps are. And I can, you know, crush cans with my biceps and I can prove it because all these people have seen me do it. Right. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm cracking some jokes here, but I'm trying to correlate what it's like, basically, in in like the cold email world. And so that's kind of the correlation I did. Like people are just going in, starting an email, and just instantly pitching and bragging about themselves. That's not the way to open a relationship and build a relationship in B2B. A better strategy, of course, is going to be to talk about them, compliment them, boost their ego, right? Avoid using the word I, right? So, and I'm not saying that you, there's not a point in time where obviously you need to introduce your solution, but you're working to get a reply. You're not working to get a meeting. You're working to get a reply, right? And there's some ways we do that. So in this video, I'm going to do a teardown of a cold email that I got just yesterday and walk through some of the good things, but also of course, you know, most of the bad things. Right? There wasn't a lot of good about this cold email. And I got to be honest, I don't get a lot of good cold emails. Right, and, and I'll respond to cold emails if they're good. Right. So in this video, I'm going to go through the teardown. So I'm going to share my screen here. So let's get started. Okay, so I gave you fair warning that this is gonna be rated R. I might drop a few curse words because this stuff really, really gets under my skin to see this day in and day out. And people thinking this is actually gonna be what gets results, all right? So I just did a video the other week and I, I don't expect everybody to, to watch my content, right? But if you're using the subject line, quick question still, um, you're probably not getting the results you could be, right? Now, I also said, if the data proves me wrong, then I'm full of shit, okay? So if it's working and you're getting, you should be optimizing for replies, you should always be shooting for good open rates as well, but you should be shooting for a 20% reply rate with your emails. All right, so problem number one, actually, you know what? Let me point out the good things first before I get to negative talent. All right, so the good things here with this email, it's short and concise. I got four lines, right? The other thing is that they followed some of the best practices, didn't put really any links in there. There was a phone number in there. So they, they you know, tried to put in a few things to you know, be credible, but no links, great thing. And it was really, really easy for me to read in terms of 
you know, how much text and stuff. My cold emails are actually a lot longer than this, right? So if there's one negative about mine, but the way we write them, we can get away with it. All right. So it was, it was short and concise. Outside of that, there's not much else going for this cold email. So I'm going to get in to, uh, I guess some of the, the bad things, right? So I already talked about the subject line. Second, like, what the fuck are you thinking sending me an email with no name in your email? You're going to send it to me with just, like, you have no name. It's just Nikki at whatever company. This, this is where your name should show up. All right, so this tells me that, like, first of all, my guard's up. Right? Because I don't even know who they are. They don't even have their email account set up right, apparently. And when this shows up in my inbox and, you know, you see all these emails, there's a name on every single one of them. And then this, this dummy decided not to set up their cold email. And you might think I'm being harsh, but just wait until we get into the content to see what they're actually pitching me. All right. So, hi, Patrick. We are working with another internet company and we've had phenomenal results. That's why I'm reaching out. So back to my intro, right? All they're doing is sitting here fucking bragging, bragging about themselves. We, we've, we've had phenomenal results. That's why I'm reaching out. This is terrible cold email. Awful. If you're doing cold email like this, like g get into my cold to gold course. It's, it's free. It's literally free. We ask for nothing in return. If you'd kindly like to respond and, and sign up for upticks and use upticks, but if you're spamming, don't use upticks. All right. But the course is free. Just learn it. This is the worst fucking cold email practice I could ever see. So in my intro, I talked about just when, like when you're back in the dating world and you just, would you just walk up to somebody and start bragging about yourself? No, you would compliment them. If you're interested in somebody, you probably walk up to them and be like, wow, your dance moves are phenomenal. Like something like that or compliment them on how they dress or whatever. Like you just need to translate that into the business world. Okay. We're not pitching. We want to compliment. We want to boost ego. Our AI powered lead gen service is generating them 15 to 30 qualified sales appointments each month. We've transformed their pipeline. Bullshit. No, you haven't. Our, right? They're just bragging again. I'm not saying that you shouldn't tell people in a cold email about some of the results you get, but given the fact that they start out just bragging about themselves and trying to make it as an excuse to reach out to me and then bragging about themselves some more and bragging about themselves some more. It's all about them. So what's a relationship with you going to be like? It's going to all be about you. Good fucking luck in life. If it's all about you. Okay. Now to move on, we use cold email to reach out to 3,000 of your potential customers every month. We see 40 to 80% open rates. We, we, again, I'm not saying you can't use I or we at some point in your email, but you usually want to avoid it for the first couple of few lines after you compliment and boost ego. If you follow our framework, you'll know what I'm talking about. But they're telling me they're an expert at cold email. Okay. We see 40 to 80% open rates, 80% is, you know, a good open rate. And here's the thing. Any dummy can trick somebody into opening a fucking email. Okay. I don't give two shits about what your open rate is. I do to a certain degree to make sure you're not landing in spam, but I care about what your reply rates are, what your booking rates are what your closing rates are. I don't care about open rates. I can trick almost anybody in the world into opening an email, but that's not what you want. Okay. We want to get results. 
opens are a signal, the first step in terms of actually getting results, but they're not everything. Okay. And then to top it off, can I show you what we did? How would Wednesday work? Hey, how about I just give you my bank account details right now because you've done such a good job at emailing me and you've assumed that I'm just available on Wednesday. I don't know you, we've never met, right? I don't know any of your customers. And you did follow cold email practices, but I don't even know what your website looks like. However, I did go look at the website because I was pissed off when I got this email and the website was fucking terrible. My two-year-old daughter could have built a better website. All right. So if you've got a terrible website, you're trying to do cold email, you need to get a better website. But don't just go in and assume that somebody's going to meet with you. That's not how you do cold email. You just need to get a reply. Don't put your Calendly link or your booking link or whatever into your email and just, well, one, you don't, you want to mitigate links, but two, don't just be lazy and assume that someone's going to book a call with you. Try to get a reply from them. It'll actually help the email algorithms and stuff like that. But don't just assume they're going to meet with you, right? And especially don't assume a day. Like that just pisses me off to no end. It pisses me off, especially after, I mean, they cold emailed the wrong person, first of all, okay? And their strategy is terrible. And they're probably getting some people interested in what they're doing. That's the sad part. Now, maybe they're getting one out of a hundred, which is terrible results, right? Maybe not even that. Could be one out of a thousand, I'm not sure. But they're probably tricking people once in a while into thinking they're actually good at cold email. And that's what gives cold email a bad rap. I had a couple sales calls somewhat recently. It was literally back-to-back -back sales calls. Both of these people told me they hired a company to do cold email for them. And this company sent over 100,000 cold emails in less than two days. In one instance, it was 24 hours. Those companies practicing shitty, spammy sales tactics are the reason why cold email and cold outreach gets a bad name, All right? So cold email is not the problem. Dumb people using cold email is the problem, okay? I mean, it's so easy to just, you know, grab domains and, and warm them up and grab as many email, emails as you can and just blast the list out there, right? But that doesn't mean that's what you should do. Okay, so if I'm not getting my point across, here's some things you need to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to what you're saying when you open your email. You need to talk about them. Remove the word I, the word we, the word our. Don't even talk about yourself. You need to compliment your prospect. Talk about them. And then you transition to how you might be able to help. And you implement a low pressure ask. But the ask is to just get a reply. Basically, that's all you're doing. If you want to learn the cold email strategy that we implement our cold to gold method, there's a link down below. You can get started. It's absolutely free if you're interested in doing it. Hopefully I didn't scare you away. I'm not normally this, you know, kind of irritated and, and upset, but this stuff boils my blood. When this person is positioning themselves as an expert in cold emailing, when they have the worst fucking cold email I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I've seen worse. But they've got a pretty bad cold email. And they're positioning themselves as some cold email guru. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this is a terrible email. All right? So if you're doing cold email like this, stop doing cold email like this. You're giving good cold emailers a bad name. All right, so that concludes the teardown of that cold email. And as I mentioned before, basically every cold email I get is a variation of that. And so if you're tired of not getting results with cold email and you want to stop spamming people and you want to do cold email the right way, start building relationships, right? And actually get results and use cold email as a growth method, then I'd love for you to check out our cold to gold course. It's absolutely free. And if you get some enjoyment and some results out of that, we'd love for you as long as you're not spamming to check out Uptick's 
which is obviously our sales automation platform that helps you manage your entire cold email process, plus a bunch of other things in terms of your sales. If you've got a sales team, we'd love to chat with you. So that's the video for today. I hope you got some value. Uh, hit subscribe, the like button down below, hit that notification bell so you get alerts when we launch new videos. We'd really, really appreciate it. Hope you got some value out of this one and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Thank you.